Good morning. Happy to see you here this morning. I'm Robert Gurgle, member of St. Lucas Lutheran Church in Bayview, where I served as pastor for almost three decades by God's grace and enjoyed that. Happy to be here with you this morning to worship the Lord. It's Trinity Sunday, and that will be our main focus, you might say, as we gather to worship. So welcome in Jesus' name, and without further ado, as they say, let's get into the hymn and enjoy our worship. God bless you. approach our God with true hearts and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. and by his authority I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let's praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace that will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, of the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of 
by your eternal spirit and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. In mercy, cleanse our hearts and lips that, free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning now and forever. Famous words from the prophet Isaiah, the sixth chapter, as we see him confronted by the glory and then by the grace of God. Isaiah writes by the power of the Holy Spirit, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I'm ruined. For I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. The sing is praise, page 122 in the front of the hymnal. Praise Him with 
Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, this holy God has provided a holiness for us so that we can stand in his presence, cleansed by his grace. Paul rejoices in this with us this morning as we hear the word. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. This morning is going to serve as a sermon text, too. It's recorded in the Gospel of Mark, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. Glory be to you, Lord. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one. And there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of our Lord. On this Trinity Sunday, you notice the bulletin has the creed that you perhaps traditionally use on Trinity Sunday, the Athanasian Creed. And, creed, and as you see, it's very long. That's good. We're not going to rush through it. We'll read it together and thoughtfully participate in this confession of faith without as I said, without rushing. Let's use this to confess the faith we share. Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the true Christian faith. Whoever does not keep this faith pure in all points will certainly perish forever. Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God in three persons and three persons in one God without mixing the persons or dividing the divine being. For each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is distinct, but the deity of God is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son eternal the Holy Spirit, eternal. Yet they are not three who are eternal, but there is one who is eternal. Just as they are not three who are uncreated, nor three who are infinite, but there is one who is uncreated and one who is infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet they are not three who are almighty, but there is one who is almighty. So the Father is God, 
The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Yet they are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord. The Son is Lord. The Holy Spirit is Lord. Yet they are not three lords, but one Lord. For just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, so the true Christian faith forbids us to speak of three gods or three lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So there is one Father, not three fathers. One Son, not three sons. One Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And within this Trinity, none comes before or after. None is greater or inferior, but all three persons are co-equal and co-eternal. So that in every way, as stated before, all three persons are to be worshipped as one God, and one God worshipped as three persons. Whoever wishes to be saved must have this conviction of the Trinity. It is furthermore necessary for eternal salvation truly to believe that our Lord Jesus Christ also took on human flesh. Now this is the true Christian faith. We believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, eternally begotten from the nature of the Father, and He is man, born in time from the nature of His mother, fully God, fully man, with rational soul and human flesh equal to the Father as to his deity, less than the Father as to his humanity. And though he is both God and man, Christ is not two persons, but one. One, not by changing the deity into flesh, but by taking the humanity into God. One indeed, not by mixture of the natures, but by unity in one person. For just as the rational soul and flesh are one human being, so God and man are one Christ. He suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose the third day from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there will come to judge the living and the dead. At His coming, all people will rise with their own bodies, to answer for their personal deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life, but those who have done evil will go into eternal fire. This is the true Christian faith. Whoever does not faithfully and firmly believe this cannot be saved. This is the truth. We confess it and sing in 277.
our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. One verse I'm going to read from the gospel, from the entire gospel for today will serve as our sermon text. Verse 34, first part of it. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, the eternal God's plan of salvation in him, who became flesh for us. In his name, dear friends, sisters and brothers in Christ. Hebrew. Bereshith Bahra Elohim. Bereshith Bahra Elohim. Bereshith means in the beginning. Bahra created Elohim, God. So in the beginning, God created. That third word, Elohim, the name for God, is very interesting. You hear the im sound at the end of it. That's a way that the Hebrew language designates a plural. So in the beginning, God created. And the name Elohim for God is a plural. Probably because of what we're celebrating today, the fact of the Trinity. One God, but three persons. Not three gods, as we said repeatedly. But one God. Not each one, one third, one third, one third, equaling one. That would be understandable. No mystery. But each person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a distinct person, equal to one another in every way, and yet not three gods, but one God. This is the Christian faith concerning the God who is the I am God, as he calls himself, the God of salvation for all people. And this designation of God separates Christians, by God's grace, not our glory, separates us from all other people in the world with their religions and their gods. For all the natural knowledge of God inside us and the revelation of God around us in creation, let us know and Many people in the world believe that there's only one God, yet without the revelation of Elohim, the plural name, the one God, as it's found in Scripture and revealed in the person of God's Son, without that, people do not know about salvation. Because the one God is the only God, and the only way of salvation is through His Son, eternal as he was God and is God and born and remaining now a human being born of the Virgin Mary the God of our salvation and the Savior of the world the true God not just a father not just God but God the Father Son and Holy Spirit and this is how he wants us to make him known as he has in his word to the world that he loves and has saved. The mystery of the Holy Trinity. It's not the only mystery in the Bible, is it? (laughs) Lots of mysteries, some of which perhaps you might think of creation. How could someone speak the word and everything happens right now, not developing over millions and billions, but right now, (laughs) commanded and stands put. The mystery of the Incarnation. How can the infinite God, infinite, without boundaries, be fully contained in that embryo that begins and Mary and grows and is born? The infinite, boundless God fully contained in the body of that baby. That's a miracle. You'll be tasting a miracle today. How could that body and blood of Christ, the Savior of the world, be present with real, the present with the bread and with the wine, his body and his blood for the forgiveness of sins? That's a mystery. How can he have filled heaven and earth, not only as God, but as man, ascended into heaven? And how will he return and be seen instantly all around the world? 
And how will he speak the word, everybody come back to life as we confess? The Christian faith believes in a lot of mysteries made known in God's holy word. Those mysteries are revealed for God's glory and for his grace to us and our salvation and through us to the world. These mysteries are not there for us to be bragging about how much we know and stumping other people. They are not there for our personal pride and our wisdom about mysteries. They have a